tourism experts say a retaliation attack for Osama bin Laden's death is inevitable. Terrorists are expected to aim for more vulnerable soft targets like shopping malls, even museums. CBS 2's Hazel Sanchez reports. They are places jam-packed with people, pedestrian malls, shopping centers, and stadiums. Yeah, I feel safe, but of course, in the back of my head, I know that things can happen. Counterterrorism expert Juval Aviv says terrorists seeking revenge for Osama bin Laden's death will turn to attacks less dramatic than the destruction on September 11th, focusing instead on soft targets like hotels, places of worship, and mass transit hubs. It's easier, less complicated for them to carry out. What they're going to achieve if they're successful is to kill as many people as possible. Security consultant David Bohm says the future could include security checkpoints entering all soft targets, like your local department store. Bohm says even with a police presence, the areas are vulnerable. The reason they're called soft is because it's so easily accessible to anyone. There has to be um, security checks for the safety of all people. Added security is a turnoff for some New Yorkers. There's a police presence and they search someone with a backpack. Somebody who looks not really suspicious, but it's random. So I would go if that is the case. Not if everyone is being searched. It's better to be safer than sorry. Despite the challenges to secure high volume soft targets like here in Times Square, security experts say one of the best lines of defense already exists and doesn't cost a thing. We are uh, millions and millions of eyes and ears. We need to assist each other and keep each other safe. Freedom coming with an increasingly heavy price. In Midtown, Hazel Sanchez, CBS 2 News. Soft target security is a long-standing practice in Israel where people and their possessions are carefully examined. It did not take many long public. at all. The documents from Osama bin Laden's compound have already given up a vital piece of information. That Al-Qaeda was plotting to strike America again this coming September on the 10th anniversary of 9-11. And the target, trains. Our Pierre Thomas has been told about the details that prompted intelligence officials to issue a new alert today, and he brings them to us tonight, Pierre. Diane, investigators have been going through this evidence nonstop, and the initial sifting of this material reveals that handwritten notes about plans to derail trains in the U.S. Authorities in all 50 states are being warned that Al-Qaeda had been planning to attack train lines, potentially killing hundreds on the upcoming anniversary of 9-11. The bulletin obtained by ABC News states, as of February 2010, Al-Qaeda was allegedly contemplating conducting an operation against trains at an unspecified location in the United States on the 10th anniversary of September 11, 2001. As one option, Al-Qaeda was looking into trying to tip a train by tampering with the rails so that the train would fall off the track at either a valley or a bridge. You can't guard hundreds of miles of track. And if they can get to one location that's not well guarded, and put uh, explosives on it or do something to cause the, the train to derail, uh, that's a lot easier than going after an aircraft. ABC News has learned the bulletin arises out of evidence recovered from bin Laden's compound, revealing that Al-Qaeda remained fixated on so-called soft targets like transportation. This appears to confirm that bin Laden still had a role in approving Al-Qaeda plots, just as he did for 9-11, in which he openly bragged about his direct involvement in planning that massacre. I was thinking that the fire from the gas in the plane would melt the iron structure of the building and collapse the area where the plane hit and all the floors above it only. This is all that we had hoped for. One official tells ABC News the material found at the Bin Laden hideout includes schematics and websites involving a variety of things Al-Qaeda was considering. One official describes the documents as aspirational, but not indicative of final stage planning. But the new evidence shows that Al-Qaeda was planning attacks that echoed past assaults on commuter trains in Madrid and London. Tonight throughout the United States, railroad and transit systems are ramping up security in response. And Diane, this is only the beginning. It's the first read of a trove of materials that they're just beginning to review. As we said, it didn't take long. Thank you, Pierre. The world never saw Osama bin Laden after this videotaped appearance in September 2007. But documents grabbed from his compound reveal that to the very end, bin Laden was still at the core of Al-Qaeda's operations and dreaming of new attacks against America. CBS News has learned that memos recovered from bin Laden's lair show the Al-Qaeda leader was thinking big. The memos reference potential attacks against major American cities, New York, Washington, 
Chicago, and Los Angeles. Sources say the writing suggests striking on important specific dates, July 4th, September 11th, and New Year's. That's interesting to analysts because it may suggest a subtle shift in terror planning. Historically, Al-Qaeda has attacked when it's ready, not necessarily on holidays and anniversaries. Sources say the memos do not indicate that the potential plots are operational. Instead, they seem to represent an Al-Qaeda wish list, loose, aspirational outlines for strikes the terror group hoped to launch. The memos do not mention any particular mode or method for the potential attacks. And it's not at all clear if any assignments had been passed out to terror operatives. Bin Laden's group also talked about attacking U.S. trains specifically on the 10th anniversary of 9-11. Tonight, the FBI and DHS are spreading that word to law enforcement agencies, though we want to stress to you that so far, no imminent plot has been uncovered. Katie? Bob Orr, thank you. This is CNN Breaking News. Uh, we're getting important new information on some of the uh, information that was picked up when bin Laden was killed. Our Homeland Security correspondent, Gene Mazurov, uh, has been learning some fascinating and critically important details of what? The Department of Homeland Security this afternoon issued an informational alert to uh, people in the rail sector and others saying uh, this was an unclassified notice, saying that back in February of 2010, uh, members of Al-Qaeda had discussed an attack on rail uh, that was to coincide with the 10th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. That would be this coming September. According to two individuals who I've spoken with who received this notice, uh, it concerned not explosives, but placing obstructions on tracks. I'm told that it did not mention any specific city or rail system. Uh, I'm also told that this is viewed as operational. One person said, and I quote, I would not view it as an operational plan. I am not aware that anyone was ever tasked to carry this out. Uh, but I am told by a law enforcement source that this was developed from information seized at the bin Laden compound this so, past week. So just to be precise, when you say rail, you mean either trains or a subway, something that goes on a track. Like That's right. And these have been frequent targets of Al-Qaeda. You had uh, bombings in London, for instance. Uh, rail has been attacked uh, in Madrid and other places. Those attacks have involved explosives on trains, according uh, to this uh, unclassified notice put out by the Department of Homeland Security. This uh, aspirational plan involved something different. It involved putting something on the track so trains would derail. So, and, and to coincide, do something spectacular on the 10th anniversary of 9-11. So here's the question. Uh, why would the Department of Homeland Security release this kind of information in an unclassified form right so quickly after the information was gathered? Well, the idea is to push the information out to the stakeholders who need it. They certainly did not give it to CNN. We have gotten it from other sources. When you uh, say but stakeholders, I think you mean local law enforcement? Uh, local law enforcement, state law enforcement, uh, the people who operate in the rail sector, people who'd be most concerned with this. They need to have the information in hand. And it is not, uh, this is not classified quality information that says, you know, something's about to unfold. This is, this just says a long time ago, back in February of 2010, they were talking about this possibility. We think you ought to know about it, particularly, I'm sure, because that anniversary is coming up in a couple of months. I will tell you that several rail systems uh, uh, with whom we've communicated in the last couple of days had already ramped up security simply because of the raid on the bin Laden compound. They're well aware that rail has been a target in the past at Al-Qaeda. Gene, thanks very, very much. Uh The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat Al-Qaeda. Yet his death does not mark the end of our effort. There is no doubt that Al-Qaeda will continue to pursue attacks against us. We must and we will remain vigilant at home and abroad. Um, well, I guess we can look forward to more... Despite the many laws that we have that are meant to restrict the government from, from wiretapping us or a accessing our communications records uh, without warrants, uh, that the government, the U.S. government, is immune from any lawsuit for violating those statutes. After the ceremony, he has only 10 minutes 